de couper une branche. Là, euh, il a reçu la branche et malheureusement, il est décédé. Je pense que il faut avoir euh, euh, une meilleure justification pour dire que there à couldn't be a better justification to tell all Quebecers to be prudent, careful. Que ce soit avec les branches d'arbres, be ce careful soit whether sûr, it's with branches avec, euh, les fils. Euh, and especially with power Québec lines. Demandé, I know euh, that quand, euh, les voitures sont dans les endroits où les Quebec has asked that if there are cars parked where Hydro-Québec workers are doing repairs, to please move their cars after ensuring that there are no downed power lines, even if they might think that there is no power in that area. I also heard the mayor of Montreal saying that there will be no parking fines. Same order of business from Sûreté to Québec. So municipalities and police services will be flexible. People need to help workers in Québec and, if necessary, move their cars. Obviously, many, many people have been affected. There's 1.1 million people who have been affected. Un million. Euh, sur le million, il y en a à peu près 900 000. Out of those Donc, 900 000, il y a 900 000 qui sont dans la région de Montréal. Puis l'autre 100 000, c'est en Outaouais. Ça a permis à Hydro-Québec de pouvoir venir et aider les régions qui sont plus affectées. Merci aux employés. Donc, so thank you to the employees. For many people, this Donc, is supposed to be the start of a long weekend, Donc, and they're being asked to work. Un, un merci à, so really, à tous les big thanks to all uh, the workers aussi, out there. Uh, Avec les équipes I was also able to see with operations team les endroits qui sont, euh, les plus that they're starting with the areas that hôpitaux, are most urgent, such as hospitals and long-term care centers. So they ensured to start with those spots. Next, they're moving on to areas that have more customers en, en on the same installation. Possible. To be able to connect as many people as possible back. I know that the question that everyone is asking themselves is when am I going to have power back? What we expect is that about a third of people will be reconnected within 24 hours. And then another third by midnight tomorrow night. So by midnight tomorrow, there should be about 350,000 people left. Ben, écoutez, euh, je veux euh, so, dire aux Québécois, soyez I patients. To tell Quebecers, soyez please patients. Be patient. C'est pas euh, du tout comme le verglas de 1998. Parce uh, because this is April and that happened in January. So we don't expect that there's going to be three or four days of freezing rain. Temperatures are better now. So please be patient. About 70-80% of you will be reconnected by tomorrow at midnight. But I do ask Quebecers if they know anyone who lives alone, please give them a call. Ask them if they need help. Ask them if they need to come to your place temporarily. This is important as we get through this situation together. Questions? And there is a mic available. Merci beaucoup. Est-ce que... Oui, on m'entend bien. Super. Uh, question, Andy Saint-André, TVA. Question pour, uh, this pour is a Legault. question for Premier uh, Legault. C'est uh, concernant donc l'enfouissement des fils. This ouais. is about the burying of cables. Est-ce qu'on doit se lancer dans l'enfouissement des fils? Should Ottawa, we dire un peu plus tôt jump into burying of power lines? Ouais. Ouais. Ben écoutez, tantôt, uh, Justin Trudeau était là, puis il a Earlier, posé la question. Justin uh, Trudeau was there, and this question was asked. Il y a quelques années, 
It was asked also a few years ago, I'm sure, and the answer was the same, that bearing all Hydro-Quebec lines means we're talking about hundreds billion. So we need to be realistic. It can be done in some places, but we have to be realistic. That doesn't mean that there are other ways that we can protect the network. We know that in coming years, there's going to be greater demand for electricity, and so we're looking at how we can protect those lines. So there are ways to do that. I don't think that Hydro-Quebec, they know this very well, transportation distribution, and so we have some of the best people in the world working on that. But burying $100 billion is not realistic. What can be done to secure the network? Ben, les choses sont en train de changer. Là. Things are changing. Que, euh, euh, Il y a de plus en Must plus understand that it's true there are more extreme weather events. Euh, avec les changements climatiques, Unfortunately, plus plus, with climate euh, change, there are going années. to be more On in future en train years. Avec Hydro -Québec, with Hydro-Québec, right now Hydro -Québec. we're Donc, adding cheap capacity. Là, que le soit, it's important euh, for the system to be more and more resilient, and we're working on that and have been for years. Sabrina Rivet de Nouveau Info en, en bas ici. <laughs> oui. Donc, euh, simplement, vous demandez, est-ce que vous pensez qu'il va y avoir ask, des programmes d'aide pour les gens qui sont ici aujourd'hui? Do you think there will be assistance programs for people when it comes to insurance, will people, will Quebec be helping people? We will do the same as we have done in previous events. Bonjour, Philippe Bonneville, 92.5. Monsieur Legault, est-ce que la situation actuelle requiert, selon vous, qu'on commence à ouvrir des centres d'hébergement en plus grand nombre? Si oui, est-ce que les centres d'hébergement vont passer plusieurs nuits sans électricité? Est-ce qu'on doit commencer à passer à même des centres d'hébergement pour que les gens puissent dormir? Where can people go to sleep? I think in municipalities where there is a need, like Châteauguay, there was no power for the pumps, and so there was, could be flooding in many homes. So we need to adjust according to each municipality. In some places it might be one night this evening, but hopefully tomorrow up to 80% will be reconnected with power. So I have confidence in the municipalities. You said that hospitals and long-term care centers are priorities. Based on your understanding, is Châteauguay a priority for Hydro-Québec to get power back as quickly as possible? Yes, in fact, we did start reconnecting some pumps at Châteauguay. There are always priorities, but some events have many risks, and so we're trying to direct those priorities, and we're trying to get Châteauguay back online as quickly as possible based on current situation. We are sending people to that area currently. Going back to resilience, Ms. Brochu said that a broader discussion was required. But from the government side, what kind of investment are you looking at in the coming years, in general, in order to increase resilience? That is part of Benoit Charest's plans that we've been talking about for a while. These include adaptation plans. We do need to adapt because, unfortunately, there will be more and more extreme weather events, especially in the spring when water levels are rising, and we've seen more of that in recent years. So we do need to make sure that the government is working in both small and large municipalities. There are points and places where people can go to take a shower if they don't have any power for a few days, for example. Would this situation require an emergency uh, declaration of an emergency, state of emergency? We are dealing with an emergency right now, and we're handling it. There seems to be a special issue in Châteauguay. We're monitoring the situation closely. Hydro-Québec just recently had a Teams meeting. 
une réunion en vidéo avec les représentants. They had a remote meeting with represent representatives from those municipalities. So it's in progress. Have you thought of asking for assistance from the army when it comes to clean up in Montreal? Not for the time being, no. We think that because it is concentrated so much in Outaouais that we don't yet need to ask for assistance from other areas. Some people were without cell service. What's going on in that regard? Être, uh, I don't have any information, to be honest. Uh, vous savez a un plan, uh, a you do know Québec that we have a plan in Quebec where we want to try to get monde, everyone connected to <coughs> the internet in Quebec uh, fibre pour avoir le 5G. Donc, uh, y a and du qui va to fiber as well, to have 5G. So that work will continue in the coming months and years. Perhaps I will have announcements on that soon. In emergency situations, what about people trying to contact uh, relatives or family? Is it important to have those networks? Yes, of course, but we need to examine each situation. People are connected in many places, even in some remote areas for high-speed internet, and we're hoping for the same thing for a cell service, and there haven't been any issues yet. You talked about cell networks. When it comes to structures uh, for communication, that's one of the priority infrastructures. So we know that there are poles or lines that might affect internet or cell service. So we're coordinating on the ground to try and re-establish both electrical service and cell service is one of our priorities. On va en prendre une dernière en français, s'il vous plaît. Si y a Last one in French. On va passer en anglais. If no questions, we'll go to English. CTV. Uh, I'll just be right over here, Mr. Right. Premier. Matt Grillo with CTV. Yeah. I'm just wondering, what's the long-term solution? Is that is it even being thought of at this point with regards to improving the resilience of the hydro network and the wires and whatnot? Because we're seeing sort of outages like this certainly more frequently yeah. than in the past. I think that regarding the resilience, it's an ongoing process. So already I think that Hydro-Quebec is one of the best in the world uh, for resilience. Of course, with uh, climate changes, we'll see this kind of problems uh, more and more in the future. So we'll have to continue uh, working on that. And uh, like I said in French, uh, we expect that uh, Tomorrow night at midnight, we'll have 70 to 80 percent of the population that will have electricity back. So, still under control. And is has there been a specific request to Ottawa, the federal government, to help out in this scenario? I know um, Prime Minister said he was available to help if the request is put in. Is that being made? We don't exclude anything. Of course, we've you've seen in the last federal budget that uh, they'll give us a 30% tax credits for uh, the work that'll be done by Hydro Quebec. So when it will be uh, 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 reimbursable, how you say that, reimbursable, reimbursable tax credit, because as you know, uh, Hydro Quebec uh, it's not paying. Uh, taxes, so it means that we'll get 30% back from the federal government in all the works that will be done in the next few few years. Uh, Mr. Legault, Steve yeah. Rukavina from CBC. What is your message to Quebecers, many of whom are anxious waiting for their power to come back on? Okay, we have to be very careful, and especially the second day. So very often, and uh, Sophie was telling me that, first day, People are careful. Second day, they are getting tired and uh, they are not careful. Unfortunately, like I said, at Le Coteau, so close to Coteau du Lac, uh, a guy uh, died because he tried to, to work on a tree. So we have to be very careful. Yes, uh, if it's possible, you have to move your car if there's work to do in the area, but be careful, especially uh, uh, when there's some electricity around or trees around. So be careful, everybody, be patient. And uh, uh, I, I want to thank, uh, again, all the employees of Hydro-Quebec because they're working on uh, a long weekend now. 
Hi, Caitlin Thomas, Montreal Gazette. Um, I'm just wondering, there's a lot of stuff to do in the coming days. Is there one thing in particular that's going to be more challenging than the rest? Making sure everybody has back the electricity. And uh, it's always the same thing. Uh, the last 20, 25%, very often it's many, many problems for few people. So we'll have to keep on working on Sunday, maybe on Monday, to make sure that everybody, and Sophie told me that she'll be there until there's one only having not electricity. So. Thank you. And just a clarification on the on the man who passed away. Um, was yeah. that an electrocution or was it just a tree that fell? Or yeah. What I heard and what I understand is that the tree fell on okay. him. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Lugo, what were your first impressions of the devastation that you saw so far? I was surprised uh, uh, how fast it, 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 it went. Uh, yesterday afternoon, we thought that uh, it would be all right. And after a few hours, there were seven, 800,000 uh, people without electricity. I was in Quebec City, so I, I noticed that it wasn't that bad in Quebec, but in the large Montreal and in Outaouais, uh, it was terrible to see how many people without electricity. So we remember, of course, old people like me, 1998, 1.4 million people without electricity. So uh, at the peak, we were at more than 1.1 million. So it's a lot. On, uh, but fortunately, uh, uh, we're in April, not in January. So the temperature is getting better. And I hope that uh, uh, we'll have uh, a good Easter, uh, Easter weekend for most of the Quebecers. Um, as my colleagues mentioned, um there, uh, we've seen outages like these take long, a long time to recover and happening more frequently. Doesn't this highlight the need to accelerate the modernization of the equipment and, and the things that are, you know, of, of the Hydro-Quebec yeah. equipment? Well, first, we have to be realistic. Uh, some people, they think that we can put all cables under uh, the ground, it would cost $100 billion to do that only in Quebec. So we have to be realistic, but there will be uh, new ways uh, to make sure that we have less and less damages. But because unfortunately, we have to be prepared, we'll have more and more uh, climate uh, impact. Merci beaucoup. C'est ce qui met fin à la conférence. Merci tout le monde. Bon congé de Pâques quand même. Merci aux employés. Thank you everyone. Happy Easter. Oui.